what is up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni. I am a life coach and this channel is Betty Grew Up. It is all about taking back control of your mental health. Today I wanted to talk to you about mindfulness and being present and in the moment. The first thing that I wanted to say is that mindfulness and meditation are not necessarily the same thing. Being involved in a meditation practice can definitely lead you to being really mindful about day-to-day -day things. It can lead you to slowing things down and that's kind of generally an effect that meditation can have on you. But mindfulness essentially is its own practice. So another misconception that I wanted to clear up is that mindfulness is actually about being able to be really present on a day-to-day -day basis with all the different things that you're doing. So while meditation is generally thought of as something that you sit and, you know, do and be still for 20 minutes, there's plenty of other ways that you can meditate, but meditation is more of a general action where you're kind of taking time out of your day to do something. Mindfulness can be something that you do on a day-to-day -day basis throughout your normal everyday tasks because it's more about an emotional state, a state of presence, um, and just kind of this certain way of going about your life and about, you know, your day-to-day -day experience. Mindfulness and meditation, all of these concepts don't necessarily have to be spiritual practices. So yes, you know, you can be spiritual about meditation and you can definitely make meditation a spiritual practice, but meditation doesn't necessarily have to be spiritual. It can really just be about you connecting with yourself. It can be about, you know, you just wanting to have a clearer mind on your day-to-day -day tasks and activities. So it's really about what you make it, but doing one of one or the other doesn't intrinsically link you to one certain religion or one way of thought. Um, you can be any kind of person and approach these things in a really wholehearted way. And then my final point that I wanted to bring up is that meditation and mindfulness is honestly like this secret key to having control over your thoughts. And being mindful on a day-to-day -day basis is amazing because it really allows you to have some distance between yourself and your thoughts and have a little bit more control over your emotional reaction. So, you know, if you are prone to road rage and if you just get so annoyed at the people that just can't seem to get anything done right at work every single day, I mean, this just gives you an, a way to d distance yourself from all of that and say, look, all of this is happening, but inside I'm still peaceful, I'm still happy, I still know that I have everything that I need within myself. And these other people or these life situations or circumstances or whatever's around me will not disturb that peace because I have that connection going on with myself that, and kind of this deal with myself that we're not going to let any of this bother us. We're not going to let these outside things deter us from our goals and our passions and what we truly want. We talk about mindfulness or meditation without talking about practicing detachment and just getting into that a little bit. So what practicing detachment means is allowing yourself to distance yourself from your thoughts and your environment. Practicing detachment in this sense is more about being peaceful within yourself, knowing that you can be happy, that you have the tools to be happy and to be fulfilled. And and that these little things going on around you don't really have to impact that balance that you have inside. You can be detached in a healthy way and be detached in a way that says, I completely recognize everything that's going on around me and I just choose not to personally involve myself in this kind of negative drama or in something that is going to bring me down. Today I have a really simple practice for you that will allow you to connect with being mindful, connect with that side of being able to have control of yourself on a day-to-day -day basis without necessarily having to meditate. And it's a practice that is actually kind of fun. Um, and it can be very relaxing and very rejuvenating. And I really like this because it's a great thing to do for when you're feeling really down, when you're feeling depressed, when you don't have a lot of energy. Um, and you know, personally, I've been kind of going through a little bit of that recently. I've been feeling a little bit lost, a little bit unsure of my life plan, but I know that I definitely don't want to give up on any of my dreams. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep going, but it's definitely difficult. And it's really easy when you're on kind of this greater journey to have feelings of self-doubt or to, you know, not really be sure of yourself. And I truly think that the most important thing is not to give up if you are in a situation like that. But again, another huge tool is just 
being able to be mindful. I've been really busy and I've been, you know, traveling a little bit, so I haven't had the right amount of time to practice my normal morning routines and my normal, you know, meditation and spiritual routines and things like that. So because of, you know, my lack of being able to do my affirmations and do my meditation and my morning pages the last few days, I've been really off kilter and I've been a little bit less balanced than I normally am and I started to really feel kind of lost and depressed and unsure of where I was going and this is something that I was able to do that really kind of pulled me back into this greater picture of what my goals really are of what I truly want to accomplish in this life that's what I wanted to give you today I wanted to give you something that you can do when you're feeling down that you can do when you're not feeling like you really care or like you really want to give 110% of yourself and this is a great way to kind of reconnect with that deeper part of yourself while also allowing yourself to kind of stay detached. So recently I went camping with one of my friends who's visiting town and my boyfriend and it was super super fun. Um, we just went for one night but we went fishing and it was a great time and I realized that even though I was getting overwhelmed and even though I was a little bit kind of in that overwhelmed lost phase while on this trip, um, I really just took some time to just journal a little bit. So the exercise that I wanted to tell you about is journaling about exactly where you are and what you're doing. So. Um, the fun part of this is that you can pick something that you really love, um, pick a little treat for yourself. So, you know, even if it's just having a long morning coffee on your beautiful porch with your plants, just watching, you know, the, the view or the road in front of you, whether it's your weekly visit to the beach and just sitting in the sun, hearing the waves of the ocean, um, no matter what it is, and mine normally has to do with, you know, surrounding myself with nature and with people that I really love and care about. And so that's what I did this weekend and I just journaled exactly about what I was doing and how I was feeling in that moment. So when you're starting this practice, I highly recommend that you write about all the sensory things that you are experiencing and feeling. So for example, so when I was camping, um, I I was, you know, sitting out on this gorgeous rock formation and I was overlooking this beautiful mountain view and there were trees and my dog was running around and there was music softly playing in the background and it was just beautiful and I could just, I was just soaking up that sun and feeling so good and that's what I was writing about. I was writing about how good the sun felt, how good the breeze felt, you know, how beautiful it was to look at this expansive view with no one else in sight and so you know, just write about these things, write about how delicious that coffee tastes or write about how good that sand feels on your body um, or how good the waves feel when you finally cool off. So it's really just about uh, describing these sensory things and just allowing that practice of writing about it and thinking about it and making it sound beautiful that allows you to romanticize the present. And what I mean by romanticizing the present is that, you know, in glamorous movies or in books we read about you know a certain time period or a certain type of person and even if the person might be a self-destructive artist or even if the time period might be a time where a lot of things were inaccessible and a lot of basic civil rights that people didn't have you know all these different things could be going on that was the actual reality of the time but in books and movies or in stories that we hear people talk about but everyone's describing the fashion and kind of the the mood in the air and even in you know in media or in movies you see these gorgeous clothes and this beautiful lighting and these beautiful spaces and you kind of allow yourself to romanticize these different times in our past or in history that weren't actually ever close to that perfect. So if we can do that about the past, why can't we do that about the present? I think that starting to write about your sensory experience and really putting yourself in a beautiful setting, writing while you're doing an activity that you really love all of these things can really give you a chance to connect with the moment and romanticize the present. Allowing yourself to turn up the vibration of how good that moment feels. You're allowing yourself to just say, in this moment, I am just drinking my coffee. I am just enjoying this view. In this moment, there's no crisis. There's no major problem that needs to be solved. I'm not at work right now. Whatever you're worried about happening in the future or whatever you're regretting in the past, 
None of that matters because you're literally just describing this moment and you're just allowing this serenity to wash over you. And from describing that moment, you know, you can start to talk about your emotions or how you're feeling or how you're doing. But normally what I end up doing is I just automatically start writing about how grateful I am, you know, to be able to take a weekend out of my life and go on this camping trip or how fortunate I am to have these people in my life that always make me feel good or how great it is to live somewhere where I have this easy and free access to nature, you know? So no matter where I start, even if I'm feeling really low or really lost or really confused, or even if I'm on the border of having an existential crisis, I can still allow myself to really connect to something and then to start feeling grateful for these different things in my life. And even if I'm not necessarily grateful for this problem that I have, I feel so much more rejuvenated by the little things, by my day-to-day -day experience, by the blessings that I have in my life that I feel refreshed and I feel like, okay, I can handle this problem or this thing that I'm dealing with in a much more calm and organized way instead of just jumping from zero to a hundred and feeling completely overwhelmed, completely lost, completely taken for granted, you know, completely looked over. It's so easy to go to that space. And so when you're practicing mindfulness and you're allowing yourself to just focus in on the moment and to feel this safety that's in this certain moment that isn't about allowing your mind to wander or allowing yourself to get in this deep emotional pit, you are giving yourself this gift of presence and of mindfulness. When I look back on really nostalgic moments in my childhood, some of them are the simplest things, you know, the friends that I was around at that time, or how simple things were, or even the lack of technology. All these little things come down to these few core moments of just regular everyday life that end up, you know, influencing you or causing you to be the person that you are now. So it's so important now to think about, you know, 10 years, 20 years from now, what will you really appreciate? Um, if you move or if your family grows or, you know, no matter what happens and what changes, what you'll never lose is the feeling of that one moment that you had when you were just completely enveloped in the life that you had and in the love for everything surrounding you and the people that you have in your life. So I really want to encourage you to try this practice. It's so simple and it's something that you can do anytime that you're feeling down. Um, even if you wanted to take a bike ride and maybe leave a voice note or something like that, just talk out the situation. Allow yourself to do something that you really love and really enjoy and give yourself that small treat while also pushing yourself to, to be mindful, to stay connected, to stay present. And this will honestly just benefit you so much in your life. It will help you practice detachment and it will just help you address your own life problems and dilemmas in in a way that you'll feel proud of. Because when you're really trying to connect to your intuition and to that voice inside of you when it comes to making a big decision or when it comes to just taking the next step in life, that voice is not gonna be a frantic mess. That voice isn't going to be all the different things that you hear from other people that are just kind of chirping at you. That voice, that true voice of what you really want and desire in life is going to be a still, calm, quiet voice that isn't based out of any anxious or erratic thoughts. It's based in just knowing deep down what you truly want and desire. So this is all just a practice to connecting to that voice and to allowing yourself to live up to you know your purpose in life and what you were meant to do on this planet. So I really hope that that video helped you. I really hope that you try this exercise and if you do let me know how it goes in the comments below. I also wanted to shout out that I recently created a Patreon page so I will link that in the description if you want to check it out but something that I'm really really passionate about is having mental health education that is accessible and that is free because there are so many people in this world that either don't live in an area where they can access mental health that they have a lot of therapists or you know they're in a position where it's either not covered by insurance or they just can't afford it and I've been in that position myself before it really is something about mental health that I want to change and that I'm passionate about I want everyone to be able to have as much free access to mental health education um, as they possibly can and so in order to continue to make you know free videos and free content
content, I would really, really appreciate your support on my Patreon page. There's a bunch of different giving levels there starting at $2, so really any amount of support helps me so, so much in being able to reach my monthly goal and to keep making free content for everyone. For some of the higher giving levels, you can also actually have some um, FaceTime with me or get some personal advice from me. So I really want to give back to anyone that is my patron or that wants to support me. Um, and again, you can follow me at these places. I will put them up on the screen here. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.